conversions and significant figures. So the first thing that we're going to do is I pulled up this little cartoon for you. It's a Foxtrot cartoon and it says, okay, here's the play. Go out 10 meters, then cut left five meters. Five meters? Jason, this is football. Everything in football is measured in yards. Look, in order for me to get the ball to you at the right place at the right time, I'm going to need to do a whole bunch of trajectory and motion calculations in my head. Trust me, it's a lot easier using the metric system. I'm telling you, you can't play football with meters. It's weird. Fine, go out 10.936133 yards, then cut left 5.4680665 yards. Tell you what, let's stick with meters. Now notice in this cartoon, the using meters is significantly easier. And that's the thing about the metric system is when you get the hang of it, the metric system is significantly easier than the standard system that we use in the United States because the metric system is all playing off of factors of 10. So the metric system, why do we use the metric system? Well, first, the metric system is based off of factors of 10. The conversions between the units are the same. And also we use Greek prefixes and it's also easier than the US system because all you're doing is moving the decimal from the left to the right or from the right to the left because every time you multiply by 10, you move the decimal to the right one space and every time you divide by 10, you move the decimal to the left each place. So the metric system is actually easier for you to use. Why is it hard for some of you? Well, it's hard for some of you because when you're looking at things, you've learned everything in inches and feet, right? But if you take out a ruler, if you have a ruler at home and you take out a ruler, there are going to be all of these different lines. You're gonna have inches on one side and you're gonna have centimeters on the other side. If you count how many lines there are in one centimeter, there are 10 lines. That's because there are 10 millimeters for every one centimeter. Now, if you look at it, all these other countries actually use the SI system. And why is that? Because it's easier to communicate with those numbers. So what units do we use? For length, we use meters. For volume, we use liters. For mass, we use grams. And for time, we use seconds. Also, for temperature, we use Celsius. So, for example, if you've ever traveled outside of the country and you're asking somebody what the temperature is outside, they're gonna tell you the temperature in Celsius. If you ask someone how fast you're able to go, then you're going to end up being told in kilometers per hour. That's what you're going to be told for the speed you're able to go. So in other countries, you're going to hear this, these metric base units. We have kilo, hecto, deca, whatever our base unit is, deci, centi, and milli. And as you go from one to the next, you're just adding a factor of 10 or multiplying by 10 going from the top to the bottom. So if you look at this, the way that I remember it, I was taught this in fifth grade, was King Henry dove under desks counting money. And the reason my teacher taught me the under desks is because of this unit right here. Okay. So now when you were younger, you probably learned King Henry died Monday drinking chocolate milk. And the reason that you learned that is because you learned your meters as your base unit, okay? And so when you learned your meters as your base unit, that's why you learned that. No matter which way you remember it, just remember what order everything goes into. So a, a kilometer, a kilometer is a much longer distance than a meter. You have many meters filling up one kilometer. So if I'm going to go one kilometer, I'm going to go a thousand meters, okay? When we're looking at our prefixes, those prefixes, and again, you this has been on the last three slides. So if you understand this, awesome. If you don't, then you might need to slow down the video a little bit. But kilo, kilo is symbolized by a K, and that's 1,000. Hecto is an H, and that's 100. Deca is a DA, and that's 10. So you have 10 meters in one decameter. You have 0.1 meters in one decimeter, okay? And then also for centi, you have 100. 
100 centimeters in one meter or 0 0.01 meters in a centimeter. Okay, so you can actually see that right here. In this slide, I've given you this is I have my metric system here and I'm starting at my meters and I'm going from my meters, my base unit, and I'm gonna go over to my kilometers. So I'm going to go over one, two, three places to the left. So if I'm at one meter, I start at one point meters because that's the same as one and I'm going to move the decimal over one, two, three. So I get 0 0.001 kilometers. Okay, so on this slide right here, you can see that we're looking at the metric chart in a different way. Here you've been given boxes. So you start with kilo on this side and you're going kilo, hecto, deca, your base unit, deci, centi, and milli. So as you go from left to right, you just move the decimal that many places. So if I want to convert to a smaller unit, I'm going to move the decimal point to the right that many times. And each time I move to the right, I'm just converting, I'm multiplying by 10. Each time I move to the left, I'm dividing by 10. So if I want to convert to a larger unit from a small unit to a large unit, I'm going to move to the left. And that's because I have many small units in my one large unit, or I have less than one large unit in my small unit, if that makes sense. So looking at this practice problem, it says convert 78 centimeters to millimeters. So I'm going to start at centimeters and I'm going to move to the right one time. So I'm going to start with my 78 millimeters Okay, and with my 78, I'm going to, sorry, centimeters, and I'm going to move my decimal to the right one time. So I end up getting that 78 centimeters equals 780 millimeters. Okay, so we're going to try another practice problem. Our next practice problem is going from kilowatts to watts. So you might have heard the term watts before. Watts is how we uh, charge electricity or we get charged for electricity. Or if you're looking at the type of uh, light bulb that's going to go into a light fixture at your house. So we're going to go from kilowatts, so KW or K, to one, two, three, to our base unit. So I'm going to start with 0.25 and I moved three times to the right. One, two, three. Okay, so that's going to, I'm going to add a zero right here and I end up getting 250 watts is the same as 0.25 kilowatts. Okay. So looking at another problem, now we're going from a smaller unit to a larger unit. I'm converting to a larger unit. So I'm going to move to the left. So if I'm looking at milligrams, I'm going to convert from 8,724 milligrams and I'm going to convert to grams. I'm gonna move one, two, three times. Three times, remember, to the left. So I'm going to use my eight, seven, two, four, and I'm gonna put my decimal there because eight, seven, two, four, and then eight, seven, two, four with a decimal are the same numbers. So I'm going to move my decimal to the left one, two, three times. So I get 8.724 grams is equal to 8,724 milligrams. Okay, so here we have 41 liters and I'm going to convert from liters and I'm going to convert to milliliters. So I'm again converting to a smaller unit. So I'm going to move the decimal one, two, three times to the right. So 41 I'm going to go one, two, three. I'm going to put my decimal there. 
and I end up getting 41,000. So 41 liters is equal to 41,000 milliliters, okay? So looking at our next slide, we have 6.3 centimeters to meters. What do you think that's going to be? And how many times do you have to move the decimal? Or it's 6.3 centimeters to meters. So we have 6.3 centimeters and we're going to meters. I'm gonna move one, two, two times to the left. So I'm going to take my 6.3 centimeters, one, two and put my decimal there. And so I get 0 0.063 meters is equal to 6.3 centimeters. It's important for you to always put the units at the end of your measurement because we can't lose those units. People need to know what you're talking about, okay? So now we're going to transition into a discussion about accuracy and precision. Precision is actually something that we're gonna spend the rest of this lesson talking about. But first we're gonna talk about the difference between accuracy and precision. If you like to play basketball, this is gonna to make tons of sense to you. If you hit the basketball net and you make a basket, you make your shot every single time, you are highly accurate, okay? You're also highly precise because you're probably hitting the same spot every time. But if you shoot every single time and you hit the same exact spot on the backboard. That right there in that situation, you're very precise, but you're not accurate. It's the same thing if you were to go to like a shooting range or something. If you're hitting the target at the bullseye every single time, you're highly accurate and highly precise. But if you're hitting the same exact spot on the target every time and it's away from the bullseye, that's not accurate. You're not accurate because you're not right at the expected value. You're not where you're expecting to hit, but you're precise because all of your, all of your shots are at the same exact spot. Okay. Now, if you've got shots all over the place, you're not accurate and you're not precise. Okay. So accuracy is how close you are to a measured or your expected value. And then precision is how close all of your measurements are to each other, how close they are to each other. And we're going to look at accuracy when we talk about percent error. We're going to look at precision when we talk about something called significant digits. So significant digits, why do we use them? Well, we need to know what part of the measurement is important. So remember last week when you went through measurement and you looked at how you take your measurement and then you always estimate one additional number. So for example, if I had my meniscus between two different spots, I'm going to estimate what that between spot is. So if you know it's between 6.2 milliliters and 6.3, you're gonna estimate it to be 6.25 because you know it's above 6.2, but it's below 6.3. So you would estimate 6.25, but we know that that point 0, 0.05 is an estimated digit. So the 6.25, that five is estimated. And we know that with all measurements. In science, we always know that the last measurement is always an estimated digit, okay? So precision, so when we're looking at significant figures, we're looking at the precision of the measurements. How precise are the measurements over time, okay? Adding more decimals, it sounds great, but without that precise measurement, which without knowing, okay, I'm using this tool and this is what it's measured at, without knowing that, then you're just kind of faking your numbers and you can't fake your numbers. Now you might think, well, I'm faking one of those numbers. Yeah, you're estimating one number because you know it's not exactly at one point or exactly at the other. Now, what if it is exactly at one point? If it is exactly at one point, you would do 6.20 or 6.30 and add that zero. Everybody knows that zero is estimated, but you always want to estimate one digit. So significant digits, how do we know if things are significant or not significant? When we look at significant digits, we're looking at specifically which numbers matter and which ones don't, but we're looking at zeros more than anything. So if you have a non-zero number, it's always significant. 
Non-zero numbers are always significant. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, always count as a significant digit. A counting number or something that's defined as a constant. For example, in physics, I teach that the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. That is a standard value. So all of those numbers are significant. It actually is considered infinite and it does not control the number of significant figures you'd calculate to. So any of your conversion factors, the known values, you expect those or you treat those as if they're not going to control your number in the end. Now, it's the zeros that come into question. So let's talk about the zeros. So right here, you'll see, I have a picture of the movie Mean Girls and the movie Mean Girls fits into this really well because you have this girl who moved in to a new school and nobody knows her and you've got the plastics and then you've got the losers, right? And so in this case, all of a sudden the new girl becomes significant because she's seen walking between the plastics. So notice, that we have our zero, our original zero. Nobody knew her, nobody cared. But now all of a sudden she's in between the significant digits, the plastics. And so now she's significant. So whenever that person is caught between significant digits or that zero is caught between significant digits, they always count as being significant. For example, in 101, that zero is a captive zero. It's between significant digits, it's significant. So now you have three significant digits. 202, three significant digits. 4005, four significant digits. So any time that you have those captive zeros, every single one of those captive zeros are significant, and then the significant digits on both sides are also significant. Another type of zero that's also significant, like we just talked about when you're taking a measurement and you say, okay, 6.20, 6.30, we treat that zero as a significant digit. So any final zeros that are to the right of a decimal are going to be considered significant. 3.0, two sig figs. 4.20, three sig figs. 5.00, three sig figs. All of the zeros to the right of a decimal after a significant digit are significant because they're significant enough to be mentioned. The person who took that recording said, this zero matters, okay? Now notice, I've been going back and forth between the term significant digit and significant figure. They're the same thing. We call them sig figs or sig digs in science. And why do we use them again? We use them so that we know what to round to, what to round to in the end. So when are zeros not significant? When are they the total zeros? They're the total losers, okay? So zeros are not significant when they are placeholders, when they're making a number very, very big or very, very small. So in this case, notice your zeros here are just making that three, four, five a very small number, a small three, four, five. So if you could write it in scientific notation easier, then those zeros don't count. You could write that as 3.45 times 10 to the negative four, and that shows you only three significant digits. So anytime zeros are placeholders, either before significant digits, or in this case, after significant digits, if they're before or after making them very big or very small, those do not count as significant digits. So in this first number here, three significant digits. In this one right here, 200, that's only one significant digit. So let's talk about some practice here. How many significant digits are in that first one? 1 1.4530. The one in question is that zero. It is a zero that is to the right of a decimal, to the right of significant digits. So it's significant. You have five significant digits there. The next one, 0 0.00304. Well, these are just making it a small number, so those are not significant. But you have a captive zero, so you have three significant digits there. 30,002. In this case, you have two significant figures that are holding captive three zeros. So now all of those numbers are significant. So I end up having five significant digits or five significant figures. The next question, you have 
two zeros that are to the right of a decimal, to the right of a significant digit. So those count. Those are four significant figures. So try to answer the next four questions. When we look at those questions, we have all of these digits are significant. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight significant digits there. You can have a lot of significant digits. It doesn't really matter. In this next one, you have a placeholder. It's making it a large number. You could write that as 1.5 times 10 to the two. So this right here is two significant digits. The next one is one. And then this next one, these three are significant. Those three are not. So you have three significant digits there. The reason those zeros in the end are significant are because they're to the right of a decimal to the right of a significant digit. So then what do we do with this information? Okay, so we have our answers here. What do we do with this information? Well, it tells us how are we going to add and subtract and how are we gonna multiply and divide? Now, we're mostly going to only use the multiplication and division. We're not gonna use addition and subtraction very often, but it's important to show you. So addition and subtraction, you're gonna answer with the same number of digits to the right of the decimal place as the value with a few digits to the right. So what you need to do is you really need to line up your numbers. In this case, we have a tenths place, we have a thousandths place, and we have a hundredths place. So the smallest digit or smallest place is the tenths place. That limits what we can round to. So, so our next one is multiplication and division. Multiplication and division is a little bit different and it's easier, significantly easier. And that's what we're gonna use most of this class. So in multiplication and division, you want to answer with the same number of significant figures as the number with the fewest number of significant figures. So if I look here, I have three significant figures here. I have two significant figures here. What's my smallest number? My smallest number is two. So when I do my whole calculation, I get 2.567. But because I can only round two significant figures, I get my two significant digits, 2.5. The six is right next to it, so I'm gonna round up. So I get 2.6. Now, some people would say something like, oh, it's 0 0.067. Don't lose the value, okay? If I owed you $2.56.7 that I could only round to two digits, would you rather me give you seven cents or would you rather me give you $2.60? It's gonna make more sense, obviously. If I don't give you $2.60, you kind of get hosed in that one, okay? So that's where that goes with that. In the division problem, we have five significant figures here, and we have two significant figures here. So this right here is an arrow, and we round to two significant figures. So we get 0 .0 or 0 0.29. Now, if you have units in this situation, don't forget to use your units. So for example, say you had meters per seconds times seconds, your answer is going to end up being in meters or say you had meters squared divided by meters, your answer is gonna be in meters. Make sure that you don't drop your units when you're answering questions for this. So when you're looking at these significant figures, I would like for you to get this down, answer these questions. How many significant figures are all in all of these problems? So when I look at these significant figures, this one right here, all of those zeros are significant. So that's gonna end up giving me five significant digits. Here, those zeros are just placeholders. It's making it a large number. So I get one significant digit. Here, I have two significant digits and those are just making it a small number. So I have two. Here, all of them are significant. So I have four, five, six. The next one, I have my zero to the right of a decimal, but to the right of significant digits. They're all significant. That one's also going to be six. And then this next one, it would be really easy for you to say one significant figure, and most people would, because you're forgetting I'm to the right of the decimal and I'm after a significant digit. 